Hello and welcome to Rhema Praise. Uh, can you believe we're already into two January. weeks into January? I know. My goodness. And the and, years go so oh, fast. They, they, fa they, they go by so fast, it's unreal. I mean, I you can't even keep up. You know it's going by really fast when, they, when children even think it's going by fast. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because remember when we were children, we thought the year would never end. Yeah, now our grandsons say, hey, is it already the I, end of the year? You know? I know. Of course, they're getting a little older, too. They're That's not literally true. like they used to be. That's right. You know, I, I, uh, I'm talking about a subject, I, I call it moving on up. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, God wants us to move up into the things He really He has for us. You know, He wants to do new things for us. Mm -hmm. Actually, nothing that He's done in the past is, e is even to be compared to what He wants to do for us if we'll move on up. God wants to do a new thing in our life. That's he wants right. us to, to move. Actually, every day with God, we should be moving up a little higher. It's sort of like climbing stairs, mm -hmm. you know, one step, one step, one yes. step, higher, higher. That's the way it be, should be with God until He comes and takes us out of here or we go to, go to heaven ourselves because He wants us to do what He has asked us to do. And as we do what He has asked us to do, we will move to a higher plane. Yes. He wants to do more In our lives. than we can think about. That's right and to propel us into even more than in the natural that we're capable right. of doing. Right. But with Him, we can do we all can things. We can move on up. That's right. Let's go right now where I'm talking about moving on up. Today, I think we need to take a look at our lives because God wants to do some new things. Isaiah 43, 18. Isaiah 43, 18. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. That's the King, New King James. The New Living says, but forget all that. It's nothing compared to what I'm, go what I'm going to do. For I'm about to do a brand new thing. See, I've already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness for my people to come home. I will create rivers for them in the desert. Here is the word of God to the Israelites. They were in captivity in Babylon. Things had, had been, the, they'd been the same for a long time, about 70 years. God then reminded them in verses 14 through 17 that he can bring them back to the homeland. God reminded them that he did mighty miracles for them. You know, and, and, and he brought them out of Egypt and brought them to the promised land. He split the Red Sea. He delivered them from Pharaoh. He led them by a cloud in the day and a pillar of fire by night. He provided food, manna from heaven when they didn't have any food. He gave them water out of the rock. He brought them into the promised land. See, God wanted the Israelites to move on up into a new level, into a new thing. He, we need to realize that the same God who did a new thing for them wants to do a new thing for us. God wants to do exceedingly far more and above that whatever we have seen in the past is nothing compared to what he's getting ready to do for us now. In the natural, you may say, oh, it looks the same. Some of you have resigned yourself to living the mundane life that you've been living for the last number of years. Maybe you've been in the same condition so long that you've lost all expectation for anything to change. 
You know, I remember when Dad picked me and my sis up, I ended my ninth grade year, 53, 98 Oldsmobile, pulling a 43-foot Spartan house trailer behind it. And we went, we were going to California and we traveled the whole state of California for that. So the next year, I, I took a correspondence course. They call it homeschool now. Back then, they just called it correspondence school. And uh, I never will forget. Now, I had, I tra I'd traveled all over the state of Texas with Dad, but I, and then, then as we got on up in, 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 he started traveling out California and other places and I'd never been out there before. And we got out there in the desert of New Mexico and Arizona, and you drive for miles and miles and miles, and the scenery never changes. Just flat, few scrub mesquite trees and a bunch of tumbleweeds. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You know, that's the way it is with some of our lives. We've been having the same old scenery for years and years and years and years and nothing has changed. But today, wake up. God wants to do a new thing. He wants to change your scenery. It's not too late to move on up. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's not too late to move on up. This morning, sitting in this congregation and listening to me out there on the internet, some of you are at a, at, a, at a crossroad. You can keep going and doing the same thing that you've been doing for the last. And we had a word we used to say when I was a teenager it said humpteen. That meant a bunch. <laughs> Anybody ever heard that word before? Oh, a few of you have heard that. But today, you can choose to move on up and have a life that you've never had before. It's your choice. Now, throughout the Bible, we see God doing many new things. God gives a new song to sing. Psalms 98.1, Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. For he's done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gained him the victory. And then God's mercies toward us is new every morning. Lamentations 3, 22. Through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed because his compassion failed not. They're, they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. God made a new covenant through Jesus Christ. Hebrews 8, beginning with the 8th verse. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in, in the day when I took them by the hand and led them out of the land of Egypt, because they did not continue in my covenant, I will disregard them, says the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after these days, saith the Lord. I'll put my laws into their minds and write them on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. God through Jesus said, I give you a new commandment. John 13, 34. A new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you. Now, wait a minute. That's a pretty strong statement. But you gotta, if you're going to move on up, you've got to get it. Now, look at what he says. A new commandment I give you that you love one another as I have loved you. How did he love us? He gave himself for us. It's funny how many people say, oh, I love you, brother. I love you, sister. But when they need help, 
you're nowhere to be found. That's not the kind of love Jesus is talking about. You know, sometimes as we live in our conditions, our situations in life, it's hard to imagine that God wants to do a new thing. He wants to move us on up to a better, greater, and more significant life than we've ever had before. I'm going to say that again. Because of our situations that we're in, our circumstances, the things surrounding us, it's hard for us sometimes to even imagine or think that God wants to move us on up to a better, greater, and more significant life than we've ever had before. You know, if we're going to move on up, we've got to learn to let go of the old things in life. Isaiah 43, 18. Do not remember the former things nor consider the old, the, the things of old. Abraham had to leave his homeland and go out wandering because the Bible says he went looking for a city. He didn't even know what he's looking for. He did looking for a city. He didn't know what city he was looking for. God just said go. He had to, he, you know, if you want to move on up, you're going to have to turn loose of, of the past. The Israelites had to leave Egypt to go to the promised land. You know, it's a challenge sometimes to forget where we've been or the way we've always done it. But today, God is saying, forget it. The old things have passed away. All things have become new. You know, God wants you to move on up to something better and something greater. Better and greater. You can't hang on to the past and grab hold of the future at the same time. Mm -mm, you can't do it. Carl, you and Steve, come up here. Come up here. Right up here with me. Okay? You get on that side, Carl. You get on this side. You're the past. You're the future. Now you start moving. I can't go as long as I'm holding on to the past. But now if I decide to go... I'm going to drag my past with me and things are going to be just like they always were. Now, let's, let's go here. Now, here we go. Let's go, future. Bye, past. I'm moving on up. Thank you, guys. You know, sometimes a picture's worth a thousand words. That's what happens when you try to hang on to the past and go with the future at the same time, doesn't work. You're either, you're either held back or you hold on so tight and try to move into the future that you drag all of your baggage with you and nothing changes. I'm moving on up, but you're dragging all the junk with you. He says, forget it. God said, forget it. He wants to do a new thing in your life. Anybody getting anything out of this? What was true about Israel's past is true about your past. Isaiah 26, 13 and 14 from the Amplified. Oh, Lord, our God, other masters besides you have ruled over us, but we will acknowledge and mention your name only. They, the former tyrant masters, are dead. They shall not live and reappear. 
They are powerless ghosts. They shall not rise and come back. Therefore you have visited and made an end of them and caused every, member of, every memory of them, every trace of their supremacy to perish. The former things that ruled you when you move on up with God, they're gone. They do not exist anymore. When you accepted Christ as your Savior, they were wiped out. Don't even think about it. Declare your freedom from the past and say, I'm moving on up. Direct your thoughts toward the future and forget the past. You can't do anything about it anyway. It's already history, but you can do plenty about moving on up in the future. And you know what? It's not up to God. He wants you to do it, but it's up to you to make the choice to do it. He gives you the free choice. You can stay where you are and be saved and go to heaven and live in misery or you can move on up while you're here on earth and live in a little bit of heaven before you get there. Hallelujah. Think about the future, not about the past. Become convinced from reading God's Word that as you move on up, greater things are in store for you than you can even imagine or think. Glory to God. I don't know about you, but I done got me happy. I'm excited about moving on up with God. I'm excited about Rainbow Bible Church moving on up. I'm excited about every one of you individually moving on up to a new level. Glory to God. Decide to move on up to the things he has for you. That's why I said it's your choice. Now, Let's go back to Isaiah 43, 19 and, uh, in homiletics. And when you're doing this in, in your preaching class, you learn, you put an A beside that. That means that you're going to use the first clause of that sentence, the A portion of the sentence. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. I'm going to read some other translations and see if it won't get you a little more excited. The basic English Bible. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it's starting. Will you not take note of it? Good news, Bible. Watch for the new thing. I'm going to do it. It's happening already. You can see it now. New Living Translation. For I'm about to be, do something new. See, I've already begun. Do you not see it? Open your spiritual eyes and begin to look. Remember the, the, the servant went out and he saw all of the enemies surrounding the city and he said to the Prophet, look at them. We're surrounded. I'm going I'm to paraphrase it, 2014 language. We're, we're surrounded. Man, we're in trouble. And the prophet said, Lord, open his eyes. See, he wanted him to realize he could move to a different level if he just opened his spiritual eyes and looked. And then he saw the armies of God and realized that they were more than what he was seeing. And he realized that God was going to turn that situation around. You need to decide today to move on up into the new things with God. A new level of blessing. 
moving on up. A new level of living. A new level of giving. A new level of ministry. A new level in relationships. A new level in worship. I mean, we got some of the best worship in this church you're going to find anywhere because I, I travel all over the country. I, 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 put, I put our guys up against anybody, anywhere, anytime. A new level of reaching out to help others. If you're going to move up to a new level, you got to get unselfish. I trust you got a hold of what I was talking about, about moving on up with God. God does not want us to stay in the same place. He wants. Uh, he doesn't want us to fall backwards. He wants us to move yes. on up. And I believe if you'll listen to what I was saying in that message and, and begin to do those things, you'll That's move right. up with God. I don't know about you, but I'm going to move up. How yes, about you? Yes, I'm yes. excited about moving yes, up. Yes, 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 yes. Well, I'm also excited about our offer. Yes, we have an offer that I think that everybody ought to get a hold of. Uh, it's, uh, it's Dad's book, The Healing Anointing, and then a, a CD, one CD. He did this message uh, about man and miracles, and actually it's talking about the supernatural, also talking about healing and miracles. And also, my book, I, I don't know, some time back, people were talking about, well, you know, it's predominantly thought that healing was done away with mm -hmm. uh, after when the apostles died. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I did a book, I did a teaching actually called Healing Forever Settled, and I talk about it in the Bible, what it says in the Bible, and then I go back in history, and I quote, in the writings of Clement, a noted theologian living in the third century, he, Clement, ordered those to approach who were distressed with disease, and thus many approached, having come together through the experience of those who had been healed yesterday, mm -hmm. and he, having laid hands upon them, and prayed, and immediately they were healed. Now, this is in the third century. Mm -hmm. That's the third century after Christ has already died. And healing is still That's predominant right. in the church. And healing is still predominant today. Yes. Oh, as you can tell, I'm ex You're I, excited. You're excited about it. When you start talking about <laughs> healing, I get excited because that's, I love to see people healed by the power of God. This yes. book called Healing Forever Settled, uh, I, I think it's one of the best teachings that I've done that really... It really nullifies all of the teaching that the healing's been done away with. That's it's right. forever settled with God. And this whole package here, uh, Man and Miracle CD, The Healing Anointed by Dad, and my book, Healing Forever Settled, uh, it normally uh, sells for about $31.90, 30, almost $32. Almost $32. And I'm going to offer it for $24.95 because I want you to have yes. this. And I especially want you to have this book, Healing Forever Settled. If you'll just go right there on the computer and go to rhema.org and you can order this right now. Yes. Hey, I want you to have it. Well, honey, guess where we're going to be in January? We're going to be in Florida. Huh? We're going to go south. I, where I trust that it will be warm. <laughs> I believe that it will be. Yes, yes. You know, your dad had some good advice. Oh, yeah, he always advised me. In, in Crusades, he said, in the winter, you go south. No, in, in the winter, you go north. In the summer, you... Um, no, 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 that's right. That's right. In the winter, winter you, you go, go south. south. In, in the, the summer, summer, you go, go north. north. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. That's right. I got it all backwards. You got it didn't? backwards, yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> well, that's the first time I ever made a mistake in my life. Ho, ho, ho. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that's right. But we are going to be in St. Augustine, Florida at Anchor Faith Church. Uh, that is January the 25th through the 27th. That's with Pastor Earl and Marcy Glisson. I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be good. That's going to be hey, good. If maybe you might want to make plans if you're up in the cold country. It's January. That's hey, right. Come on down to Florida and we'll have a good time in the sunshine yes. of the natural, and we'll have a good time in the sunshine of the Lord. That's right. And you know, we like it so well in uh, the in the wintertime that we're going to be there the whole week. Then yes. we're going to Miami, Florida. Right. So that's a little further down. We're going to be there January the 28th through the 30th at the Alpha and Omega Church. Our friends, Pastor Alberto and Miriam Degato. Oh, I'm looking forward yes, to being with Alberto and those guys. That's a fantastic, they're a fantastic couple. That's right. I'm been looking forward to that. If you want to find out about us, you can go to rhema.org 
and and our schedule is there and you, you know and hey you might want we might be coming someplace close to you and yes. you can come and be with us and we our word of faith magazine is there you can download it or you can just read it online right there if you want to and i want to remind you in our crusades the very last night we call it healing night. yes 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 and that is the time that we pray for the sick and i'll tell you what we've had some miracles yes, yes, happen yes. during those services so if you need healing i would advise you to to come out, especially on that night, as hands will be laid on you. Yeah, and you know, hey, hun, we have a new station that's joined us that's uh, right. th this year. We do. Uh, WJYS uh, channel C TV channel 62 in the Chicago area. Mm -hmm. And we'll welcome all of you. That's and all right. you uh, there and your new view viewers. And hey, we thank God for all of the all the old viewers, the partners we call yes. them, our word partner ministry. And if you want to know something, you that are viewing there in the Chicago area on 62. If you want to know about our Word Partner Club, you can just go to rhema.org slash WPC yes. and it'll tell you all about it. Somebody said, well, what is a, what is a Word Partner? Well, in, in the short, okay, it's somebody that sends us an offering once a month That's right. uh, to help us keep the, keep going on everything and preaching going. the gospel and keep everything going. Going to the uttermost parts of the uh, world. The most parts of the world. That's yes. what our Word Partner Club member is. And I want to thank all of you that are th that are our Word Partner Club members and all of you that are going to become Word Partner Club members. And I want to thank you as we leave today for helping us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. world. The love for the miraculous is in every man. The curiosity for the miraculous is deep-seated in man. Man was brought into being by a miracle work in God and will ever yearn to work miracles. The supernatural realm is really man's realm. Man and Miracles, a powerful CD by Kenneth E. Hagan to help you learn to live in the supernatural and the healing anointing. In this book by Kenneth E. Hagan, learn how to cooperate with the healing power of God and receive what belongs to you. Also, the anointed book by Kenneth W. Hagan, Healing Forever Settled. Learn that the Word of God is forever settled on the subject of healing. The CD and both books can be yours right now for only $24.95 by calling 888-PRAISE-8 or log on to rhema.org anytime, day or night to order. Do it today. Man and Miracles. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Ken and Lynette Hagen. Ken, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information, please write, call, or visit our website. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope, help, and healing for a hurting world.